Hey guys, welcome to the seven figure case study. My name is Gary Huang. I'm super excited to share this journey as I build an e-commerce business from scratch, uh, from A to Z. And I, I'd like to invite you on this journey. Today is episode one, and we're going to show you how I'm going to find a profitable product away from the crowds. So today's game plan is I'm gonna give you a quick introduction. What is the seven figure case study and how this is different from anything else out there. Then we're going to look at product selection, why this is the number one thing. I'm going to share with you a $16,721.60 mistake I've made in the past in product selection. So you won't make the same mistake that I did. And then I'm going to show you exactly in real time how we're going to do this. Where do we find products, the key numbers that we have to keep in mind and also a real-time walkthrough to show you an over-the-shoulder view of how I'm going to do this. And also, I'm going to share with you my goal for this week. And if you guys stick around to the end, we have a special bonus. Uh, I've also run an online event called the Seven Figure Seller Summit. I've interviewed hundreds of eight-figure, seven-figure sellers, distilled all of their strategies into one playbook, which I'd like to offer you um, at the end. All right, so let's, let's dive right in. So first off, I'd like to introduce the seven-figure case study. I'm going to show you how to build build a seven figure e-commerce business from scratch. And we're going to start off finding and validating product ideas away from the crowds. We're going to walk through sourcing, quality control, certification, shipping, um, design, logo. We're going to um, ship it without breaking the bank as well. And we'll also, after that, we'll launch the product and market it afterwards. So this will be a weekly series every week. Please tune in and you will uh, join me on this journey. And then we're really going to leave no stone unturned. We're going to cover everything. Um, so what's different is what's different from everything else out there is we're not going to focus solely just on Amazon. There's a lot of different um, opportunities out there besides Amazon. Walmart is up and coming. Shopify is a great way to build your own site, to build your own email list, to create a community of raving fans. And even crowdfunding is another opportunity to really turn this model upside down, right? And avoid spending a single cent on inventory. And you can actually pre pre-sell your products. So I, I really want to show you what it's it's really like to build a business. I'm going to be totally transparent with the products I choose. And I really want to show you both the good and the bad, because a lot of times, you know, normally you online, you only see like a highlight reel of Lambos, lifestyles, uh, you know, beaches, parties, etc. But in real life, it's not like that. This is an entrepreneurial journey. There's ups and downs, right? There's going to be high highs and low lows, as you guys know. So, I, I mean, I know there are times that, that I'm going to get stuck, right? Um, problems are going to come up. I'm going to get frustrated, right? Um, that's where I'll show you how to, you know, I'm going to think through these challenges, how we can pivot quickly as a small business. We can actually, you know, we're like a speedboat, right? We can pivot through these choppy waters riding through this perfect storm. And this way you'll be more motivated than on your own to really join me on this journey to create a seven figure business. Um, and then many of you have told me the entrepreneurial journey is a lonely one. I know a lot of you are, you know, maybe a one man, one woman show you're working out of your basement. Maybe your family just doesn't get it. You know, I get it. You know, I'm in the same situation, right? So we're going to do this together. Um, oftentimes, you know, life gets in the way, right? Family commitments, work commitments, um, health issues, you, you know what I mean, right? So we're in the same boat. All right. So if that, if that sounds good to you, I would invite you to join me on this journey where you will not be alone. All right. So we'll, we'll push through these challenges together. All right. So let's start out. Okay. Why is choosing the right product so important? Okay, I, I've spoken with a lot of marketing experts, PPC agencies, and you know, I asked them 80 20 rule, what is your number one recommendation when it comes to PPC? And then I was surprised. They said, you have to choose the right product. Okay, product selection. This is coming from marketing and PPC experts. They handle, you know, seven figure ad spend every year, but it all goes back to product selection. That's why it's so important. So I'd like to share with you this, this saying, right? You can put lipstick on a pig, 
but it's still a pig. Um, that was from Barack Obama, right? So the pig in this case is a, a poor product, right? If a product is in an oversaturated niche, if there's too much competition, if the quality is bad, if it's like a three-star product, no matter how much money you throw after it, no matter how great your package design is, it's not going to work, right? It's going to be an uphill battle and then it's, it's not going to be successful. Okay, so that's why product selection is number one. It's so important. Really wanted to dive deep into this today. Okay, um, so once you do that, then you start off on the right foot and then you can really escalate this business. Okay, I'm going to share with you my $16,721.60 mistake. This is a mistake I made several years ago earlier on in my e-commerce journey. Um, it was probably one of the, the first few products that I started selling on Amazon. This was in 2017. At that time, I was following the mainstream, very popular um, tools like the, the methodology, you know, putting all of those numbers into the filters and then out comes that million dollar product idea. It sounds great, right? Not so fast. What if you, if you start out at the same place as everyone else, I find that you end up in the same place as everyone else. If you're using the same tool, using the same formulas to generate these product ideas, there's probably going to be hundreds, if not thousands of other people looking at the same products, right? So in my mistake, what I did, it was exactly that. I used the tool. Uh, it spit out this product idea. I did the numbers. I'm like, it looked great. It was sleeping bags. It was a type of sleeping bags. Okay. So the first red flag is this thing is way too mainstream, right? It's, I mean, there's like huge companies going after it and it's, it's very obvious as well. So it looked good initially, but a, a few months down the line, you know, I, you know, as I built the product, as I sourced the product, I had discussions with the factory. Actually, I went to the factory. I visited the factory in China and we sat down, we, we designed it. We actually, we over-designed it. Okay. So another red flag was don't try to create this from your head. You know, we're not Steve Jobs. Okay. We can't predict the future. We have to look at what the audience is saying. So that's something that I didn't do. And I really over-designed it. We had um, this hood, we had this iPhone holder, we had this little pillow, we had this nice design. We had, we really over-designed it. So long story short, um, I placed an order for four variations of these sleeping bags, as you can see here. Okay, and then we launched it. And then when it came through at the end, crickets. Okay, the market became saturated. Um, it was very competitive. It, I mean, a few months earlier, it was it was not, but this was, you know, following the crowd. Okay, so long story short, it didn't work out in the end. I had to liquidate these products. I mean, we we actually donated them to the local um, charity, the Salvation Army. So I mean, there was a good cause that came out of it, but business wise, this was a fail. So I wanted to share with you an actual real world case study of my mistake: sixteen thousand seven hundred twenty one dollars and sixty cents. So what not to do? All right, let's move on. First off, how are we going to do this? Okay. We're going to first off create a product ideas list. Okay. We're going to keep a running list of product ideas. And it's very important that you're training. You know, I always find that, you know, we have to get into the entrepreneurial mindset, right? I mean, they don't teach you this in school, right? Nobody's going to grade you on this. So number one is don't self-censor yourself. I find a lot of sellers do that. You know, they think, oh, you know, that thing's been done. That's not a good idea. I'm not going to put it down. Don't do that. Why? Because I find it's a numbers game. So bad ideas, you got to put down quote unquote bad ideas because sometimes they can generate some good ideas from them. And then I'll show you some actual examples later. Okay. Um, next, in terms of the tools that I like to use personally, number one is my brain. Okay. That's the ultimate tool because every one of us is unique. Every one of us is different and we need to get in the habit of processing and jotting down these product ideas as they come to us. Okay. I use two tools. One is Google sheets. I keep a running list of product ideas, which I'll show you in a minute. And then secondly, I use a an app called Evernote. So Evernote is a note taking app and I will actually save page web pages i'll save instagram posts i'll save pictures on what i see into an evernote um folder and then later i'll put them into my product ideas sheet in google sheets and i'll show you this as well okay next so where do we come up with these products so 
to me, the biggest no, no is don't use a software tool um, to come up with product ideas. There's a time and place for them later. We're going to use them to validate the ideas because they do give us useful data, but don't use that as the starting point. Okay. Um, so probably, you know, that, that's probably the most popular method using tools like jungle scale, helium, tian, zanguru, et cetera, th that'll come in later. All right. Um, why don't we start there? Because if you start the same place as everyone else, there's a huge crowd there, right? So it looks good today, three months down the line, like that sleeping bag, you know, it's going to be totally saturated and chances are going to be very low that you're going to be successful. Okay. Um, so tools save that until later. So I'd like to share with you some, some ways that I'm finding products. So first off online. Okay. Um, I like to follow the news. I like to also look at top 10 lists, buying guides, as well as external sites, YouTube, Pinterest, Etsy. And then let me, let me actually show you some ideas. Okay. So this is going to be very raw. Um, I'm not gonna, this is not going to be like, a. um, you know, like a corporate presentation. This is going to be real world entrepreneurship. Okay. So let me just show you first the product ideas list. So I keep a running product ideas list in Google sheets. So I'll draw down the ideas. Okay. So let's start online news. So recently I, did you, did you know that Apple's, um, number one sold out product? Do you know what it is? By the way, um, comment below if uh, if you do know what it is before I tell you, okay, I'm just curious. It's actually not an electronics product. As of right now, Apple's number one sold out product is a $19 polishing cloth. So it's this little cloth that you use to polish your brand new MacBook Pro and or your like your $8,000 computer. So it's really funny how this thing is sold out. Okay. So I, I just saw this on the news some recently. So you know what? I'm just going to put this down, right? So polishing cloth. All right. Don't worry about having the perfect uh, keyword yet. We're just going to put down ideas first. Okay. So, you know, I just saw this in my news feed. It was, came up in one of those, um, one of the newsletters that I subscribe to. Newsletters are another great idea. Um, I, I like morning brew. Um, that's a very good newsletter that takes like the top news of the day and then puts it into one. All right. So that's one tip for you guys. Um, Another newsletter that I like is Exploding Topics. So this newsletter will actually track trending, like newly trending products that are up and coming. Okay. Um, so for example, cat toothpaste. So you can see it's trending from 2017 to 2021, right? So searches for cat tooth toothpaste are are two and a half times like two X you know, over the past five years. Okay. Um, so you can see here that they list some brands, um, Vibrac, I've never heard of them. Growing brands are these what's next cat toothpaste is a part of a holistic pet health meta trend, right? Okay. So that's very interesting. And then other emerging topics include freeze dried dog food, dog vitamins, raw dog food, pet insurance, vet health. Okay. So I'm going to put these down. Paste. Freeze dried dog food, dog vitamins. Okay. Okay. And then I'm not going to worry about, you know, supplements and food. I, I know a lot of people don't want to get into that, but for me right now, it's beginner's mindset. Everything is open. Okay. Because by putting down these ideas, it could be a springboard to a different idea that I didn't think of later, but the overall, the trend is here. Okay. And then I would also save this to my Evernote folder. So, um, I have a shortcut email address that goes to Evernote. All right. So that will be in my Evernote folder later. Okay. Um, so these are some ways to look online. Um, I wanted to share you something else that was cool that I found. I was just scrolling through my Instagram feed and then an ad popped up for this all in one creator tool in the box. So basically this is, um, kind of like an iPhone stand slash light for content creators, especially TikTok creators that, you know, they use, so they, they look, you know, the best they can. Right. And also it is really cool because it has like an overhead view that if you're doing something, if you're like maybe scrapbooking or, you know, doing jewelry, it can have that camera angle. So literally it's like an all in one box and it folds up into a box. And you know what, I think that's kind of cool, right? That's new. And, um, you know, I'm in Japan 
right now, this 8,400, you know, it's roughly $75 US, right? So the conversion rate doesn't really matter. And, you know, I use Evernote. Um, what I like to do is I'll save this into my Evernote folder. Um, I have this folder called product ideas. So I'll put this in, okay. So I'm really taking you in a behind the scenes look, you know, how the sausage is made, right? How I come up with these ideas, because I, I really don't know, um, you know, where this is going to go, to be honest, you know, this is live, this is a real walkthrough, but you know, this is going to go into my Evernote and then we'll take a look at these. All right. So we'll let that save. And then I'll, I'll put this down as well. All in one content creator tool. I'll, I'll just add for TikTok because TikTok is another big trend that we're seeing right now. Okay. And in addition, um, something else that I like to look at online is um, external sites like, like YouTube. Okay. Um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let me, let me go back. Okay. Okay. So we talked about some buying guys, news, top 10 lists. Um, I'll, I'll get more into that as well in my live walkthrough. All right. So let's keep going. Okay. So also I like to observe offline. So in my day to day, you know, when I'm going out, if I go to the mall, if I go to, to, um, you know, any like shops, I like, to, I like to see, you know, what's hot, what's up and coming. Okay. I notice you know, what do people, what are people talking about? You know, if you're standing in line, uh, you know, what, what your friends are talking about, maybe, um, you know, when you, uh, when you hang out with your friends, uh, would also online, like Facebook groups, you know, what's, what's hot, what are people talking about? Okay. So also I like to pay attention to, um, new trends like books, you know, books are really in since pan post pandemic, uh, you know, people are really going back to reading books, which is interesting. You know, I'm really into cooking. So, you know, I'm, I get into, you know, I follow niche books like, uh, David Chang. Uh, he's one of my favorite chefs. And, um, when I see these ideas, oftentimes, you know, these authors or these content creators, they'll mention, you know, some things that they use, right. And then add those to the, to your list. And I'll, um, I'll show you more about this in a second. Also, the third thing is um, coming up with product ideas is to really observe yourself. So I really believe that every one of you is unique, right? Everyone has your unique gifts, your unique talents, um, your backgrounds, you know, your story, right? Your experience, where did you grow up? What was your family like? Where did you go to school? You know, what kind of work have you done? Or maybe if you're a student, right? What sort of hobbies do you have? Um, you know, are you, uh, are you a parent? Are you, you know, a single person? Are you, um, you know, baby boomer, right? You know, everyone is unique and then we all, our lifestyle is different, but the cool part is, you know, yourself and your niche, and then, you know, the, the things that you like. So you're able to find these ideas that other people cannot, right? Especially overseas sellers, Chinese sellers, you know, they have no idea about, you know, your culture and what what you're looking at, right? They're merely copying. So you can really be on the forefront uh, to be a, a market leader when it comes to that. All right. So you can find ideas from that, from yourself, look at yourself. And many people overlook this. I, I find it, it's so, it's so surprising. Okay. Um, also, we're not going to forget the key numbers, right? You know, mainstream uh, private label, they always talk about the search volume, right? The competition. We're, we're going to talk about that. We're going to get to that, but not right now, because the main goal for this week is to come up with product ideas. We're really training your, your mind, your mindset, your brain to build that entrepreneurial habits. Okay. So we're later, we're going to talk about the search volume, the competition level, the reviews, the PPC, the profitability, the intangibles. Uh, also, is there a community that we can build around it? Very important, but not yet. Okay. We'll cross that bridge once we get there. All right, so I'd like to give you an additional real-time walkthrough um, coming up with more product ideas using some hobbies. So this is another way that you can come up with ideas. This is unique to you. And, you know, hobbies are really lucrative niches because people are willing to spend money on that. You know, a lot of people are, you know, they spend a lot on, on cooking, like like me, for example, you know, like buying that that new um, that oven and the Instant Pot. Okay. Um, I wanted to walk you through an example with uh, one of the 
the cookbook authors that I follow, David Chang and Priya Krishna. Um, I don't know if anyone, any of you guys have heard, but um, so I have their Kindle book. Okay, so um, this is their new book. It came out recently, Cooking at Home. So what's cool about this is they wrote it during the pandemic when people were stuck at home. Right. And then they didn't have the same resources. You know, David Chang, he's like a, a James Beard award winning chef. He runs Momofuku, like the, one of the top, some of the top restaurants in New York City and all over the world. But when he was stuck at home and he was a new father as, as well, he really had to tone that down. Right. So he, you know, I believe what he said, rather than try to hit the, the bullseye, you just want to you know, get hit on the target the target right so you want to create some food that tastes good but you know forget about all that fancy presentation etc right so how to save time he's really into using the microwave you know and that's like one of the things that people overlook or they think you know it's it's even dangerous but it's not so it really it's something that's surprising okay so i'm just going to jump to the chapter that um private label like entrepreneurs would would look at a good equipment checklist for any kitchen so that sounds very interesting right so this is filled with product ideas right um some of them are probably too obvious right like a good cutting board a chef's knife right paring knife but you know what i'm still gonna put it down anyways because maybe i'll think of something that goes along with the chef's knife right or a different type of chef's knife chef's knife so um wooden cutting board so he has some more mainstream things um so for just for the sake of time i mean in real life i would put all of these down okay but just for the sake of time i'm going to jump ahead fiberglass chopsticks that's very interesting i never knew there was such thing so these kind of chopsticks of host to plastic are indestructible right light great for both cooking and eating right making eggs flipping tofu okay that's very interesting i find that that these products that are kind of weird you know it's not something you can just walk, walk into your local walmart these have more chance for success um online okay um, silicone spatula, okay. And then he has, goes into tier two. So fish spatula, serrated bread knife. Okay. So again, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to manually put all, all this in right now, but I'll, I will put this in later. So small whisk, right? So, so I would put that in as well. Um, tweezer tongs, right? Salt crock. That's something that you don't see all the time, right? Okay, just use, okay, things don't get, you don't get, okay, just use a bowl, salt crocs are a marketing scam. Okay, so I, I like that. All right, so that so that's one way. So you can see I came up with about seven or eight product ideas from there, just off the bat. Okay, um, also let's go back to YouTube. Okay, so YouTube actually is a gold mine of product opportunities. I wanted to share with you this quick tip because I mean, um, some of you guys may have heard of this there's um these amazon affiliate links and then many of these youtubers they're very savvy so they link up to um to amazon product listings as you can see here so i just did a quick search for amazon instant pot tools instant pot is one of the tools that i use it saves a lot of time when you're cooking um like meats like brisket um like pork shoulder etc and when you do a search for instant pot um, i always think of the accessories to go with a top seller okay so it, I add amz.to. So what is this? amz.to actually, it's um, it's an Amazon affiliate link. So it's a short URL. So anytime you see um, you see a video with that link, that means that they're an Amazon affiliate. So why is that important for finding prof profitable products? You can see that each each one of these products it has an affiliate link, right? So these are actual products that these influencers are using, right? So Instant Pot Trivet, for example, right? So I'll add that to my list, okay? So Tall Trivet, okay? So many of these items are very niche, but they have certain uses that mainstream people wouldn't think of, okay? And then, so you can see, if. I like how they have the timestamp, so it would go directly to that. So what accessories I recommend to try, right?
Okay, so that one comes for free, but there's all these different things, like an extra ceiling ring. This thing is actually super useful because if you use this thing, you know, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, so the old one gets yellow and it's, it's useful to have a new one. And sometimes there's a smell, there's a residue, right? I'm not gonna get too far in the weeds, but I literally, I would put down So literally there's 29 product ideas there. Obviously not all of them will work. Most of them won't work, but there will be a couple of nuggets as you do this over time. Okay. So do you see, I hope you saw how I did that. Okay. Um, YouTube, that's a gold mine. The key is amz.to. Okay. That's the, the key search term abbreviation, because by doing that, you will find the actual, um, the products. And then what's cool is they actually link through, they link to the Amazon link. Right. So if you want to learn more about the product, it's right there. Okay. I actually bought this in 2019. So yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go back. Um, okay. This, the second example that I want to show you, um, finding profit, pro profitable product ideas is looking at yourself, right? Your own family. For example, my son is turning three next week. All right, so it's a milestone for us and it's awesome, right? So, you know, think about, um, so so I'm planning his birthday, right? So I, I Google around, best gifts for three-year-old toddler, right? What should I get him? You know, I don't wanna just buy him some more like, you know, candy, right? Oh, your boy, okay toy gift guide, the only toy gift guide you need, the, the 25 best gifts for three-year-old boys, okay? So you can see here, I mean, this this is just a gold mine of product opportunities, right? I mean, some of these are, are named brands, but it doesn't matter. I mean, Meadows and Doug pattern blocks and boards, I mean, that's a product that's not hard to, to manufacture at all, right? And you won't have the same branding, but you can play around with it, right? So pattern, okay, so I'm gonna take that, add that to my list, right? Okay. There's so many products, right? I mean, wooden dashboard, that's kind of cool, right? Paw Patrol, Rescue Mission, wooden dashboard. So in that case, I would put the generic name. So wooden uh, car dashboard toy, right? And you can see here, like literally there's another 20 plus products here, right? I mean, some of these will be saturated, oversaturated, but some of them will not be. And then you can find new product ideas. Okay, so I, I literally don't have time to put everything down, but I, I hope this is useful. You can kind of see what we're doing, right? I mean, I could easily come up with 50 product ideas just in like five, 10 minutes. Okay. Another pain point, potty training. Okay. You know, I, I was reading this book about potty training. They were talking about these types of potty training, like toilets. And, you know, there's like this car seat attachment. I mean, there's like, so, you know, that reminds me like potty, um, training car seat attachment, right. In case you have an accident on the road, you want something to, so your car seat doesn't get dirty. Right. I don't, again, I'm not worrying about the exact keyword right now, I'm just going to put the idea down. And then next week, we're going to go through this with, um, with more fine, uh, like a fine tooth comb. Okay. Um, another thing is, you know, I really like a hope of mine is I want to get my son interested in cooking, right? So there's like certain tools out there, I was googling around. Okay, so I'm into cooking. I know this website, Serious Eats, is really good. It's a really popular site, right? How I got my toddler interested in food and cooking, right? Don't use negative words. Again, we're looking for, for more products, right? Let them taste everything, encourage them from eating, make meal times for them. Don't worry, they start them young. So there's a book coming. I would read that book as well. Um, 
cook with them, right? Okay, look, best tools for cooking with kids, right? Do you see that? Best cooking gifts for kids, bingo, right? Look at all of these. I actually, I, I got this wooden cutting board. This one's really cool. Like my son really likes that. You know, there's like, so wooden, so that's an idea, right? So wooden cutting board set for kids. Yeah, literally it's just too many ideas that I can keep track, right? So, you know, mortar and pestle, right? Like kid size, mortar and pestle, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we've come up with like 20 ideas already. I mean, I, actually a lot more than that, but um, I, I hope this is making sense. All right. So um, this is a quick walkthrough of what I'm doing right now in, in step in the first episode in phase one, um, finding a profitable product idea. I'm going to do so some more research this week, but I want to show you exactly how I'm getting started. Okay. Um, so I come up with a hundred, my goal is to come up with a hundred product ideas. One more thing I forgot to mention is Evernote. Uh, I wanted to show you Evernote. Uh, you don't have to use Evernote, but I just like it because I can, you know, when I'm browsing online, like the internet, I can just keep track of the stuff that I see. Okay. So I was, you know, I, I keep everything in my product ideas folder here. So there's, you know, scrapbooking scissors, right? Um, I was following a friend and, you know, she's really into that. So the three pairs of must have scissors scrapbookers need in their toolkit. So scrapbooking is something I know nothing about, but it's interesting that they have scissors for just for that, right? So scrapbooking scissors, there's probably something unique about it. So I, I would spend a little time to dive into that. Okay. Um, and then, so here's Olivia, here's the, the product that I mentioned earlier. So I save it there. Okay. Um, I was looking for toys, right? I thought this was kind of cool. I was looking on Pinterest and I saved it in Evernote. So, you know, homemade T-ball stand, right? So, you know, my son's into baseball, but it's kind of hard for him since he's only three to hit the ball. So T-ball stand for kids. Okay. You can see I, I capture everything in Evernote. So this way I don't lose anything, right? So even if I see something on the street, you know, I can snap a photo, I can put it in Evernote as a picture file as well. Okay. Um, you know, there, there was also like, I actually didn't take a picture, but a kid's play map for toy cars and trains. This is kind of like a mat that my son likes to play with. Um, I saw that there was only like one product on Amazon for that. So I'm just gonna put that down. You know, maybe we can create something even better. All right. So that's, um, let's put this back. Okay, so that's the live walkthrough portion. So my goal for this week to hold myself accountable. And if you'd like to join me as well to so come up with a hundred product ideas on my list, okay? And add them to my list. I'm not gonna worry about bad ideas, good ideas. Just, I wanna come out with the ideas this week, all right? And then next week in episode two, we're gonna review the product ideas. So we're gonna validate these ideas with software tools. Um, Amazon has some new tools that they're coming out with like the product opportunity, Explorer, uh, brand analytics, also we'll use external sites. And if I, last but not least, we're gonna use our brain, right? So um, I'm curious, what was the, the number one takeaway you got from today? If you can comment below and let me know, that'd be great. And if you have any questions about finding a product idea, if you're stuck, um, let me know what's your number one challenge. I'll answer some questions for next week if you'd like to join in. All right. Um, so thanks guys for sticking until the end. I'd like to share with you uh, a free bonus. I, I host a, an online event called the seven figure seller summit where I interview seven figure, eight figure e-commerce Amazon sellers. Um, and then I've distilled a lot of their top strategies, what they're doing right now to, to crush it online on e-commerce. So I like to offer this as a free gift to you. You can get it at sevenfiguresellersummit.com slash playbook. Again, um, this is a free PDF and all you got to do is sign up your, with your email. Let me know where to send it to. All right. So thanks so much guys. Um, again, 
this is the first time doing it, comment below. Let me know like if I'm doing well, if, if it's not going well, how can I improve? I would love to hear your feedback because I would like to invite you to join me on this journey as we create a seven figure e-commerce business. Uh, this is Gary Huang, seven figure case study. Thank you. We'll see you guys at the next session. Bye everyone.